my gosh, I am so excited that you're on. I have been such a huge fan from afar for so long. I oh, so love nice. your journey. I wanted to bring you to my community because you're such an amazing, I mean, your energy is amazing anyway, because you're a shaman, but you just have such, well, first of all, you have such a powerful story. And two, your energy, like you can just feel it through like your website and your social media. And I'm just a huge fan of you. So if you can tell people who you are, what you're about, I mean, you, you've been all over the media, you have such accolades. And I want to get into kind of like, people this time might need a reboot you know, of, of what everything we're going through and, and anything you want to share in your journey that you think would serve people at this time. Mm. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you. <laughs> uh, thank you. And thank you for the kind words. And that means a lot that you just from going to my website or my Instagram, that you can feel the potency and you can feel the medicine that I have, you know, dedicated so many lifetimes to embodying and cultivating. Mm. So thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And yes, I mean, I, I won't, I don't know. I always feel a little weird talking about myself, but I, I suppose it does help whoever's tuning in to understand the framework of why we're chatting. Uh, I, I aligned with my calling as a shaman through a divine intervention and spiritual awakening day. So, you know, people can come to awakening spiritually through gradual waves and it can be layer by layer and more subtle. That was not the case for me. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I, of course, incarnated here on earth with the calling uh, of a shaman in, encoded inside of me. So I came down here to earth with that mission within me to awaken. It's just before I had my divine intervention, I was not connected to that truth inside of me. And I was in a very suffrage filled relationship. It was very karmic. It was very codependent. Uh, there was just a lot of pain for many years, and it was because I was ignoring and denying the signs of my own body and of my own being, and the signs of all my helpers and the unseen realms who were mm -hmm. trying to course correct me and get me out of that relationship. Because I was not heeding those calls, that's why my spiritual awakening required uh, this. There's a whole story to it. So if anybody watching wants to hear the story, any podcast interview or any interview I've done, this like a longer format, I share that in full. So yeah. if you're curious about that, please you know check out that. But uh, basically, in a one moment in time, great spirit, my guides awaken my clear audience gift. And through me hearing their instructions, I was led to uh, confronting my greatest fears. And it was in confronting my greatest fears that my veil that was covering my third eye lifted and my egoic shell got obliterated and I became awakened instantaneously. Mm. Wow. So yeah. for people that don't know what a shaman is, or maybe they're going through like a similar thing where... Uh, maybe they're in not a great relationship or they're not listening to themselves or they're ignoring the signs. Like, can you just like shed some light on that? Well, I mean, it, it is a tricky road, you know, and, and I have compassion and non-judgment for anyone in those situations because especially if it's a relationship, um, depending upon past lives and karmic things and wounding, because there is a thing called trauma bonding. So in a lot of times in relationships, especially romantic partnerships, uh, if you really haven't devoted to healing work, a lot of times both people connect through the wound. Mm. And when that happens, of course, that relationship then is going to be filled with a lot of pain and confusion. And when there's codependency and wounding and pain body activation involved in any relationship, it's understandable that people get swept in that tornado. Yeah. And, and that's how people can, including myself in that past relationship, how you can lose yourself and just get so discombobulated, mm -hmm. you know, so it, you really have to be courageously and fiercely honest with yourself. And if you have been wondering, 
if you might be in a situation like that where you are ignoring the calls, devote your next meditation to really getting real with yourself if you want to. If you want to stay, if you're not ready to exit out of that system, if your soul is not there yet, you know, things happen when they're supposed to. And me telling you, uh, you know, the people have to come to those decisions themselves. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you feel like you're ready to really confront some brave questions, the next time you're in meditation, really consult your heart and your soul and ask your own heart and soul questions around the relationship. And it basically boils down to this. And I'll wrap this, this, uh, this little topic at this point by saying that you can either take notice of the signs that have been coming in and really heed them, or you wait until it builds to a cataclysmic time, which is what happened for me with that divine intervention. So it's like oftentimes you can just get thrust and forced into a place where you have no, there's no other option but to exit out because your life depends on it or something really extreme. And I'm not advising that, but I'm just saying when you ignore the signs and the wisdom that has been repeatedly coming in, oftentimes we get pushed into those very extreme situations. Yeah. So you can either exit out based upon the wisdom that you've already gained and bravely looking and taking notice of that, or, you know, typically you get pushed to a point that's pretty serious. Mm -hmm. So my next question is, so you have launched an online like school right? Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. you tell me more about that? Because I looked at it, it looks amazing. Um, so tell us more, like, what do you do? What do you teach? Like, yeah. tell us. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for asking. Honestly, it is the work so far that I'm the most proud of. And it's called Soul Reboot Spirit School. And it's an online course where anyone you can enroll from anywhere in the world because it's online. And then you can go at your own pace. And it is a culmination of many, many lifetimes of shamanic work. I will just say that. Uh, and every single class, I guide a different shamanic journey for different purposes. And it's all very, very attuned and uh, by divine design, each step, each class, each soul assignment in between the classes, which is the homework that you do, it's designed to go in that certain flow. And it's a very powerful progression. Uh, there's shamanic journeys in there that I guide for you to meet your spirit animal. If you have yet to connect with that guide mm -hmm. for your life, there's uh, shamanic journeys to access into a past life, which mm -hmm. oftentimes when you do past life work, you heal so much within your current life by mm -hmm. going back and healing wounds that then travels multidimensionally to help you now. Uh, there's, shamanic journeys to uh, see your highest self, to step into your grandest form of the mm. truth of you. And of course, it wouldn't be a rock star shaman course if there was not shadow work involved in there. Yeah. So there's a shamanic journey to go in and really do the deep shadow work and to transcend fears, which is an absolute vital key if you want to embody your full power. So, um, and I'm so glad that we're chatting today because this is actually the last day that people can get this entire course for just $88. Wow. So if anyone has been like thinking about it, you know, the most cost effective price ends uh, today. So get on it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, let me ask you this. What do you think from your perspective or spiritual perspective of like the coronavirus? Like, is there a deeper meaning to it? Like, I mean, I yeah. think so, but I would love to hear your opinion and take on it. Yeah, sure. And so I'll just preface this by saying that I'm going to share from the shamanic perspective. And even though I'm sharing from that very specific perspective, I'm aware of the bigger picture. You know, my sister is a nurse in the hospitals and really one of those people on the front lines dealing with this and all of the very, very challenging components that come from mm -hmm. people passing away um, right now. And so I'm just letting people watching know that I'm aware of that side, but from a shamanic perspective, the, what is happening right now on the planet is what we call the void. And when you on your personal life are thrust into a period of the void, it's a big abyss. 
that's filled with great uncertainty and great unknown. So some examples of that might be, and I've had it happen to me a lot of, in my own personal life, when you walk into your job one day and you're told, oh, even though we told you last week that you're gonna move on to this next show that we're producing and that we were gonna have you on board, that's not true anymore, today's your last day. And all of a sudden you find out you lost your job. Or, you know, a couple of years ago, I was instructed by Great Spirit to completely stop doing everything that I was offering, the live events, the talks, everything that I was doing that I was making a living by, I was told to quit. And that thrust me into, and I heeded the call and I trusted, but I said, okay, if I do this, you've got to support me in figuring yeah. out like, if I'm stopping all of that, then what? And I went into an over two year voided period of recalibrating my entire energetic system inside of me so that I could live from a place of greater presence and joy. That's just what I had to do. But right now, what is happening on the planet with these great awakening energies is the planet is thrust into this voided state where there's so many questions, so much you're, you, the planet is basically floating in this energy that feels like a completely dark abyss. Mm. And people are reaching out and trying to see what's next. When is it coming? What are the answers? But the powerful thing about states like this is that yes, it might evoke a lot of fears. Yes, it might evoke a ton of emotional waves and uh, a lot of uncertainty. However, this same portal that we're in is also the home of infinite possibilities and mm. infinite miracles. The key is learning how to devote to whatever spiritual practices to keep you centered and in your power so that yes, you may ride these emotional waves or one day you feel the collective fear and you feel a lot of anxiety. It's important to healthily feel that so you don't spiritually bypass. So you feel it, but the key is you don't get stuck in the lower realm system. Mm. You then go to the spiritual practices that you know will get you back into optimistic thinking, that will get you centered in your power again. And if you learn how to alchemize the void, you absolutely will emerge out of these phases your grandest self. It's the phoenix. It's the phoenix rising mm, and yeah. that's what happens in the void it's just how are you going to work this time are you going to get stuck in victim mentality are you going to get stuck in fear and let it take you down or are you going to notice consciously when those thoughts and fears come in and acknowledge them with compassion and then get really strong in your spiritual conviction and say okay this is my time like it forces people into innovation and yeah. that's why sometimes when you're pushed up against the wall, all of a sudden the next you know, brilliant business idea comes to you or you realize, wow, this is actually a lot of this stuff I've been praying for. Because a lot of people pre-void, pre this great awakening, were in jobs that were not aligned with their soul's power and purpose. Yeah. And now is the time to really get real and tune into why am I here? What is my calling? What is my purpose? And you can birth out of this time aligned in really living your purpose and, and tapping into miracles. Mm. Wow, that's so beautiful, Allison. So that so that's what so would you say like your your awakening like it, it pushed you into that like a similar experience of like back a hundred a hundred percent and i'm not sure this person fb in wonderland said kind of what i experienced today and i'd be curious if whoever that is wants to share a little bit more yeah. about whatever realization they had uh, but yes that's exactly what happened to me after my divine intervention and spiritual awakening it was so earth shattering, my life got turned upside down. So it was the most terrifying experience and the most anguishing and painful experience I ever had. Yet simultaneously, at the exact same time, it was the most powerful and divine and miraculous experience because I was forced to face myself. I was forced to face the truth of the relationship that I had been in denial over. And in being forced into that pain and power, I had my surrender moment. And that was the game changer. Because I then said, oh my God, I'm not who I thought I was. Great spirit, great mother earth, show me the way. And after surrendering into rock and star, that's where the name rock star shaman comes from. After having that surrender moment and statement, I have then heeded every call that's come in. And that's where I have to give myself credit 
you know, and that's where we have to take responsibility. If we do want to tune into the unseen realms and all this infinite support that is always around us, it takes us communicating and saying, I'm ready. I want to work yeah. with you. But then the next most important step is taking responsibility because they will send you in the messages and the steps to take. But will you trust yourself to take them? Will you trust the whisper of the wind? Will you trust that vision that came in during your dream? And will you walk forward from those messages that come in from the unseen realms? That's the question. Yeah, and so that so is that where um, like the shadow work comes in? Like, is it the clearing of it out or, or facing like the the shadows of yourself? Yeah, it's a that's yes. In essence, that's why shadow work is so important because shadow aspects are aspects of ourselves that unless we bring them forward to really face them, smell them, talk to them with compassion and get to know them. Unless we bring them forward, they're the gremlins. They're the, mon the monster, what we think are monstery feelings and aspects of our personality that we keep shoved in the back. Yeah. And any time you're, you're pushing an aspect of yourself away or denying yourself from facing that aspect, maybe because you think you have, you have shame around it. Maybe yeah. there's, a, there's an aspect of your behavior or personality that you feel embarrassed about or you've held shame around. And as long as you're denying that aspect breath, and an acknowledgement of unconditional love, it will forever feel like this thing that's haunting you and trying to take you down. But when you bring it to the front and you speak to it and you heal it, it's only then that you can transcend. And when you speak to it from love and allow yourself to transcend, then that shadow aspect gets healthily integrated into you. It's mm -hmm. no longer being shoved behind and when you healthily integrate all aspects shadow and light of yourself that's when we get in our whole divine power i love that so it's like a, it's a leaning in like a leaning into it like not avoiding it is what i'm hearing you say yeah yeah and it's scary um oh she's explaining yeah, what so happened she's, to her yes. while i'm talking maybe if you can read it but yes yeah it, it can feel it obviously it's why it's called shadow work you know it can feel scary to confront these aspects of ourselves that we have denied looking at for so long but it is the only way to true spiritual liberation yeah. and the more you do it the less scary it gets and the more you trust yourself to traverse the entire spectrum of hum human emotions. Yeah. And the more you can just witness yourself from a place of unconditional love and not be scared of your own self. Yeah, so she says, so today I found my soul, soul code meaning. I found a way to speak and get clear answers from my soul. It feels like I am reborn. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that's exactly, that is precisely, I had a feeling that would be an example of precisely what can happen in these voided energetic portals. Yeah. So whoever that person is, she, you know, either walks a spiritual path or, you know, has a devotion to evolving. Her soul had to have been at a place of certain readiness to courageously have that activate inside of herself. Wow. So I guess like, th so this is so, so if people want to do the work, like what would you advise? I mean, obviously you have your course and you know, you're all about serving people, but like, what would you, what else would you offer? Is it, is it just the willingness? Is it, yeah, it is. It is the willingness. It's the willingness to to be done with suffering. Mm. It's it's the willingness to step into your self worth and self respect and self honor and self love and say, I am worthy of miracles. I am worthy of joy, and I'm done with suffering. And when you give yourself permission to do that, then you start to expand into this space beyond you that is, is more expansive, is greater. And you start to realize that truly at all times, like at any moment, if you're feeling constricted and angry uh, or um, anything lower realm, anything fear-based, you just feel tight because anything mm -hmm. lower realm makes you just constrict, right? Yeah. Anytime I feel a constrictive energy system or emotion coming over me, I remember, I let myself be consciously aware, oh, I'm feeling tight, I'm feeling anxiety. And then in that moment, I remind myself 
that I live in an infinite possibility universe and I can access into and expand into any emotion that I want to at any time. And mm -hmm. right there, it just gives myself permission. I'm like, oh, I don't have to stay here. I don't have to stay in this constrictive fear-based place. I can breathe into an expanded space of gratitude, of looking at my beloved partner and tuning into love, of looking at the, my dog Cookie and my cat Jelly and remembering like the joy they bring into my life, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so the last little thing that I'll say is right now what's really big is everyone themselves learning how to go within themselves and birth their own inner trust and own inner navigational system. Mm. You know, it's, it's really a time of pause right now. So many, especially in Western society over here in the U S we get so conditioned to have external validation and external acknowledgement and praise coming from the outside right now with this pause, a lot of that is ceased. And I'm so glad because where, where true fulfillment and true joy and true peace and true happiness come from is from inner knowing and inner wisdom and inner validation. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can do inward practices, it is going to open up your power and your light and your spiritual gifts inside of you. And that is where you get aligned with infinite miracles. And that is where you truly feel fulfilled because you're fueling your own being because you're aligned with your, with your calling. So any inward practice that people can go to chanting, uh, you know, getting, you don't have to be a shaman to have a drum, just sitting and drumming and singing. The drum is the heartbeat of our soul. So if you sit and you drum, it opens up your chakras. Uh, meditating, uh, breath work, um, sitting in silence and gratitude, gratitude journaling, going outside and tuning into the whispers of the wind and, and any aspect of nature, communing with nature. Uh, before I get out of bed, I tune into my heart and my soul and I ask my heart and soul, what do you need today? Mm. What can I do that will most serve your joy? And I always ask, what can we do that's of greatest service today? Tune into your heart and soul. There's so many, so many things you can do that are inward practices that will then allow you to trust your own intuition, to trust yourself to navigate your life in all capacities. And you don't, you do not wait for others to tell you what to do or where to go or how to feel. It's all built inside. Mm. I could listen to you all night, Allison. <laughs> I could, I, I literally could listen to you all night. Um, so I guess final thoughts, like to wrap up and then, so your course, so it's, this is the deadline today, $88 for, for that price. Um, do you go in your bio? Is, is there a link in your bio? And yeah, yeah. You can go to my Instagram at I am Allison Charles. The link is in the bio, or you can go to my website, allisoncharles.com or rockstarshaman.com. And yeah, today's the last day. And I was really divinely guided. The last course I did was almost $4,000 and it was wow. different. It was a live smaller group and this is go at your own pace and it's to mm -hmm. camera. I filmed it. And so there's differences to it. However, you know, I, when I was asking spirit, how can I be of service most at this time? They took me right to the course. And then when I asked what to charge for the course and $88 came in, I was like, really? Cause that's, you know, so it's really, this course is valued easily at over $5,000, but it has felt so liberating to my soul to provide it for mm. only 88 because so many people have been messaging saying like that they lost their jobs or different things have been going on in their lives, yet they they wanted to lean into yeah. spiritual work more. So right away, I knew it was the right decision. And um, so, yeah, uh, you can go to my website or my Instagram to get in, into Soul Reboot Spirit School. That's so amazing. Um, so any final last words or what you want to say? Let's see. Let's see what wants to come through. Let me tune in. The three words that came in were sunshine, breath, and joy. Let me, let me see why. 
The sunshine is because of the correlation into, I'm touching my upper abdomen, that solar plexus chakra that's at the top of our abdomen. And within the solar plexus chakra is where our authentic light, our authentic power, and our authentic purpose for incarnating on earth. A lot of that ancient wisdom lives in that solar plexus chakra. So right now, that's a lot of what the work is that's happening in this voided state, in the state of a lot of unknowns, of people losing jobs and, and wondering where, where to go from here. Tuning to your solar plexus and opening up that ancient wisdom can be really powerful. So going outside and calling the sun, calling the sun's energy and power and wisdom to go into your solar plexus and help to cleanse and clear that chakra and to tune you into your purpose for incarnating. The breath, the breath is prana, it's our life force. So doing any kind of breath work will help to open up new energy inside you and to also clear out stagnant old energy that's no longer serving you. And so it was sunshine, breath, and joy. Joy, let me tune into joy. Ah, it's okay to feel joy right now. Mm. You know, I understand there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of anguishing emotions happening planetarily right now. However, just because that is occurring, don't think that you can't feel joy. Mm. You know, right now I'm in the most joyful gratitude filled time of my entire life. I aligned with my mm -hmm. beloved a couple of months or a few months ago. I made the move from New York to LA. I feel so empowered offering my course to be of service. I, I have a lemon tree in the backyard. I have so many incredible people in my life and I'm going to allow myself to feel that fully. So I'm just, if anyone out there, you know, needs to hear this, even though there is a lot of pain and confusion happening on the planet, if what is happening in your life and inside of your being is very high vibrational, don't feel bad about that and don't squelch that and don't suppress the joy and high vibration emotions that your being is wanting to feel right now. Mm. I love you. <laughs> I love, I love you. you. Uh, so I am signing up for the course because I just feel so guided. Um, so I'm very excited for that. And, thank you. Um, I just want to thank you for your time and your energy and just your words of wisdom. Like so, so thoughtful and so of service. I know it helped me. I'm sure it helped so many that are going to be watching this live and the replay. I'm going to have that up. And um, I just want to thank you so much, Allison. You're well, amazing. thank you. Yeah, no, I instantly, when you messaged to, to see about doing this, I, you know, I could just tell you're such a light worker and doing so many great things for the world as well. So I definitely wanted to connect with you and meet you. And thank you for asking me these questions and just so genuinely, um, yeah, just so I can really feel your appreciation for all of this work. So I, I appreciate that. Yes. All right. So we'll be in touch soon. And thank right. you guys for tuning in. And thanks yeah. once again, Allison. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I saw some people I didn't get to say hi to, but I'm saying hi now. Um, I see you. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. Bye, Bye guys.